Hey everyone, it's Patrick. Welcome to your Tuesday yoga video that is coming your way on Wednesday. My fault for the delay, but I just got back from a few long weeks of traveling and teaching all over the Midwest, and I just didn't have time to create a good video for you guys. In today's class, we're going to do a nice Hatha style practice that is going to make your hips and hamstrings feel amazing. It's going to be a great way to start off your day or finish your day, depending on how you like to practice. Before we begin, please hit the like button on this video. It really helps us grow the channel and lets me know what kind of yoga videos you like to practice on YouTube. Additionally, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. I'll make sure to get back to those as soon as possible. Let's begin. Welcome to class, let's start on our backs. Lay down flat, go ahead and set your feet up like you would for Setkibandasana, the bridge pose. So, heels close to the butts, knees pointing towards the sky. Ground the heels down slightly, elevate the hips off the ground just an inch or two. Keep the gaze straight up to the sky. And when you get there, pull the shins slightly underneath you, You'll lift the hips just another inch or so. We're not working towards the full range motion of the pose, just trying to wake up the hamstrings. Wake up the lower belly, wake up the core. Begin to sway the knees side to side a little bit. Maybe rolling to the outer and inner edges of either feet respectively as you do. Keep the shoulders grounded to the floor. Keep a gentle lift of the chest. Then again, just allow this simple movement to come into your body. When you feel nice and balanced out, go ahead and drop the tailbone to the floor. Float the feet off the ground so they're at the same height of the knees. Squeeze the legs together, open the arms up like a cactus and gently drop the knees over to the left. Reaching the tailbone forward, grounding the right shoulder down, bringing your gaze over to the right side. And gently lift the legs up and switch. So the knees drop over to the right. Bring your gaze to the left. Try and ground your left shoulder. With every exhale, allow your body to relax a little bit into the space. And gently bring your legs back up. Reach the hands along, roll the chest up towards the knees, engaging the core a little bit. Reach the feet up to the sky, float the tailbone off the ground. Creating a raindrop or a teardrop like shape with your body taken in hand. Now the exhale, pull the chest up towards the knees more. Reach the feet up higher towards the sky. Get long through the heels to get long through the toes. Beautiful. Slowly pull the right knee into the chest. Lower the left leg as long as you can and reach the arms overhead. Staying with your breath here. Controlling the lowering of the left foot. Let it take a nice long time. Beautiful. Reach the left leg up to the sky. Reach the right leg up to the sky. Reach the arms forward. The chest rolls up towards the knees again. Try and keep the tailbone lifted. This time the left knee pulls into the chest. Really reach through the right foot. Beautiful job. Begin to lower the right foot down slowly. As you do, reach the arms up and overhead. Feel the belly button pulling towards the spine. Controlling the lowering of the right knee. Stay with your breath. Stay with the engagement. You're not here for too long. Fight the good fight to hold this position. Beautiful. The right leg reaches back up to the sky. The left leg reaches back up to the sky. The chest rolls up towards the knees. And gently relax the body down towards the floor. The feet press together. The knees open up wide like Sukta Baddha Kanasana. In fact, bring a hand to the heart and a hand to the belly for a moment here. Just allowing yourself to recenter. Beautiful work, press the feet together, lift the feet off the ground, keeping the knees wide. Try and float the tailbone off the ground an inch here. Reach the hands forward towards the feet, and then crunch the chest up towards the feet for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nice job, set the shoulders down to the floor. Reach the legs up to the sky, knees come together. Catch the feet and then roll up onto your shoulders. Come in as much as you can. It doesn't need to be like a full plow pose. You don't want to put any pressure or stress on the neck here. Just something similar to an inverted Hashimoto an inverted forward fold. Allowing the hips to stretch long, allowing yourself to 
wake up the hamstrings just a bit here. Keep pressing the backs of the legs up to the sky as much as you can to get long through the heel, activating the front of the leg. And then gently roll your feet forward, crossing the ankles, rolling over the legs, and stepping right back to your downward facing dog. Press into the palms, feel a little bit of activity in the core, a little bit of space through the side of the waist. You have to go ahead and inhale, roll your way forward to plank pose. And exhale, roll your way back to down dog. Waking up the hands a little bit here, rolling your way forward to plank pose. And rolling your way back to down dog. Beautiful, look long, lift the right leg up to the sky, step the right foot forward in between the hands, hop up onto the fingertips, reach the chest out on the inhale. On the exhale, step the left foot up to the top of the mat, fold. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale to fold down. Bend the knees as you inhale, rise up to stand, reach the arms up to the sky, getting long. And then exhale the hands, come to heart center. Inhale, reach the arms up, and exhale, fold down. Bend the knees as you reach the chest out in the halfway lift, and then step the left foot back long, keeping the heart reaching out as far as you can, pulling the belly button up. Find as much length through the back lifted leg as possible. Perfect. Place the hands to the floor, step right back to your downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg up to the sky. Now make sure the left knee comes to the left rib cage as you roll your way forward, setting the left foot down in between the hands. When it gets there, hop onto the fingertips, reach the chest out, really press into those right toes, finding more space in the body. On the exhale, step the right foot up to the top of the mat. Inhale the halfway lift, extending the chest, reaching the crown of the head out. And on the exhale, you fold. Bend the knees a little bit as you rise up to stand, reaching the arms up to sky. Almost like you're doing a half chair pose as you get long. And then exhale, fold down to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift, bending the knees. And step the right foot back long. Again, keep the left knee over the left ankle as the right foot lands back. Keep reaching through the right heel. Pull the belly button and feel all of that work you did on the ground. Just here in the lunge. Then bring your palms back to the floor. Go ahead and step the left foot back to your downward facing dog. Press into the palms, look long, lift heels, bend knees. Walk, float, fly, top of mat, allowing the landing to be gentle no matter where you hop from. Inhale the halfway lift, and exhale to fold. Bend the knees a little bit, inhale, rise up, reach the hands up, get long. And exhale, hands to the heart center. Press into your left foot, go ahead and step the right foot back long and wide. Perfect. Inhale, elevate the chest, curving the shoulders back behind you. And exhale, fold down towards the floor. Walk the hands out in front of you a little bit. Take a mini bend in the knees and sit the hips back a little, lengthening out your lower back, pulling the belly button in. So it's almost like a halfway lift in your wide leg forward fold. And then from here, begin to walk the hands back towards the feet, catching the big toes. Take the inhale, and then exhale, pull down. Keep the shoulders lifted. Now we won't do much on the hands today, so do your best to really work the pulling motion through the shoulders and the folds. One more inhale here. And exhale, release. Inhale to halfway lift. Again, bend the knees a touch, sit the hips back, really find more length walking the hands out forward. See if you can pull the belly button up. And then from here, reach and float the right hand off the ground. Bring the right hand back to the floor, reach the left hand off the ground. Left hand back to floor, pull the belly button up again, recommitting to your core strength. Float both hands off the ground. Try and let your lower back be nice and flat, sitting the hips back slightly. Feeling the hamstrings working, but also creating space. So they bring your hands to the floor. Straighten the legs. Pivot the right toes towards the back corner of the mat. Bend the right knee deeply. Pivoting to take your side angle pose. Parjvakanasana. 
Pressing the outer edge of the left foot into the floor, reaching the left hand up to the sky, breathing into that big extended space through the left rib catch. Take one inhale here. And on the exhale, reach the left arm up and overhead, lengthening it long towards the right big toe. Float the right hand off the ground and spin and reach the right hand middle. Feel the right rib cage all spinning more and more to the inside of the right leg. Even though they may be creating space, every inhale allow your body to grow. Every exhale allow yourself to sit a little bit deeper into the right hip, feeling the full effort of the posture. And then exhale, hands to the floor. Roll onto the left toes, reach the chest out long. Take the inhale here. And then exhale, straighten the right leg. The slight stutter I'm starting. Get the right toes off the ground if you need to, but keep elevating the hips, dropping the heart down towards the front of the right shin. Feel free to sway the hips a little bit here, allowing a bit more space into the right hamstring. Letting the head hang heavy, being fully connected with your breathing. Really nice. And then exhale, bend the right knee, reach the chest out, and circle your way all the way over to the other side. So the right heel grounds down, the outer edge of the right foot presses firmly, the left big toe points dead ahead, and you inhale, sweep and reach the right arm up to the sky. Getting long through the right hand, getting long through the right side waist. Breathing into the left hip, sitting deeper. Allowing yourself to feel, in a lot of these poses, the strength and flexibility coming together. Keep reaching up through the right hand on the inhale. On the exhale, reach the right arm overhead, and then reach the left arm to the middle. Your left rib cage might lift, but focus on bringing the left rib cage with you as the left hand reaches towards the middle of the room, towards the middle of the mat. Can you counteract that by breathing into the left knee, pointing straight ahead, so you feel the action of counteraction through the left side of the body. Keep active through the side waist. One more inhale here, beautiful effort. Exhale, hands to the floor, rolling onto the right toes, reaching the chest out, and then straighten the left leg to fold over the left shin. And again, it doesn't matter what you do with the heels, with the toes, with the hips even, but just allow yourself to find some space in the left hamstring, maybe a little bit of movement through the leg. Just a few breaths here, really allowing yourself to create a bit more opening in the body. Bend the left knee, reach the chest down, and then work your way back to the middle, right where we started from. Reach the hands out to the side, bend the knees, hit the hip back, pull the belly button in. And again, this isn't a deep bend of the knees. It's not like a defensive stance in basketball, but you're really just looking to create as much space in the low back as possible as you balance out the hips sitting back and the heart reaching forward. Inhale, rise to stand as you do. Bring the palms together above the head. Elevate the chest. Take the inhale. And then exhale, bind the hands behind the back. Press the palms together. Lift the heart up. And exhale, fold down towards the ground and just move all the way into the fold for a moment here turn to keep the shoulders out of the ears keep the palms pressing together feel that gentle stretch or maybe it's an intense stretch for you and then exhale go ahead and release the hands to the floor walk the hands out slightly longer lengthening the back body bend the knees reach the hips back pull the belly button and working that core strength Perfect. From here, reach the hands out to the side, just like you were a minute ago. Feel the feet anchoring. And then see if you can roll to the inner edges of the feet, lifting the outer edges of the feet off the ground, getting all that control through the inner line of the leg, allowing the hips to maybe sit back a little bit more just by accessing your breath. Take one more inhale. On the exhale, straighten the legs. Fold forward. Press the outer edges of the feet into the floor. Catch the big toes again. Take the inhale. And exhale, fold down.
Really, as you're working into your legs here, you're feeling more and more space. But that space is being created through your effort, through your action, and through your breathing. You're understanding how to stay calm through the work. Release the big toes. Gently walk the hands out in front of you. Pivot the right toes to the back of the room. Bend the right knee deeply, press into the outer edge of the left foot. Reach the left arm back behind you and find your way into warrior two. Allow the core to stay super engaged. Feel reach through both hands. Keep a gaze steady over the right middle finger. Press actively into the outer edge of the left foot. And see if you can keep holding the right side body away from the front right knee. It doesn't need to be moving away aesthetically but the action of pulling away, allowing the shoulders sit, to sit perfectly on top of the hips, allowing you to sit deeper into the right knee, letting your breath guide you on the journey. One more inhale. On the exhale, bring the hands to the floor on the inside of the right foot. Keep the feet just as they are. If you'd like to shorten the stance, feel free. In fact, I'll do that just in case you want to modify a touch. But straighten the right leg. Keep the left hip rolling down towards the floor. Bring your right hand on top of the right foot. Even if you need to bend the knee, that's just fine. And then inhale, sweep and reach the left arm up to the sky. In every pose, there's a perfect alignment for every body. But that alignment is predicated on your physical measurements. The amount of space you have. And additionally, what you're looking to achieve right now. We want to feel the left hip roll down so we can feel this core spinning up through the left side, understanding how to twist your body by using your strength, by using your midsection, how to create flexibility by using your own strength, and vice versa. One more inhale in your triangle pose. On the exhale, the left hand is to the floor. Bend the right knee slightly so you can sweep your way all the way over to the other side. Pressing the right heel down, straightening the right leg when you get there. Ground into the left heel, activate the midsection of your body and see if you can open up to warrior two without using your hand. Open, feeling the broad effects of the pose. Again, anchoring into the right foot, grounding into the left heel. Keep your gaze straight out in front of you. Stay steady with your breath. Feel the left rib cage pulling in towards the right side. It doesn't need to aesthetically happen. In fact, we're not looking for that. We're trying to allow length right underneath the left armpit, keeping a firm action through the arms, holding steady. Be mindful of your efforts, sitting deeper into the left hip, but you're doing so from a perfectly stacked and controlled position. The exhales are allowing you that release. And then slowly bring your hands to the floor near the left foot. Shorten the stance if you need to. We're working towards the triangle pose. Spin the right hip down as you straighten the left leg. Moving all of that work away from the bent knee effort. Moving into the control of the straight. Remember, if you need to bend the left knee, feel free. Bring your left hand on top of the left foot. Reach the chest out. And then keep the right hip spinning down as you peel the right rib cage up to the sky using the core strength, using the midsection of the body, using the spinning of the right rib cage, looking up towards the right thumb with the bottom left eye so you know you're opening from the middle and not from your shoulder flexibility. Really nice effort. Stay with your breath here. One more inhale. Exhale, right hand to the floor. Bend the left knee. Reach the chest out. Sweep your way back to the middle. Straighten both legs. Inhale the halfway lift. Bend the knees, sit the hips back, reach the chest out slightly, pull the belly button in. And again, walk the hands out as long as you can. Really feeling a lot of length, a lot of space. Reach the chest out, float the right hand off the ground. Right hand down, float the left hand off the ground. 
Left hand down, belly button pulls in, inhale, float both hands off the ground, sitting the hips back, reaching the chest out, stay with your breath, stay present in the focus of your pose. Beautiful. Rise up to stand as you reach the arms back, straightening the legs, lifting the chest up and away from that work. And exhale, fold right down to the floor. Catching the big toes. Take an inhale. And exhale, pull down. You might have way more space in the hamstrings right now than you have before. Allow the head to hang heavy. Stay consistent with your breath. Stay here, of course, if you flirt with an inversion in your practice. Feel free to place your hands on the ground and let that become a reality or your head on the ground or your forearms on the ground. It will only be for three breaths, so just access the pose. Bringing the feet together to touch overhead. Bringing the feet back down to the floor. Taking your time. Reaching the chest out, everybody. Inhale, rise up to stand. Reach the arms up. Look towards the top left foot as you bring your hands to heart center and step your way up to the top. Sweep the fingertips down to the floor. It's the floor as you bend the knees, press into the heels. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Utkatasana chair pose. Lengthen through the fingers. Take one more inhale here. And exhale, fold. Again, a great opportunity to slide your hands underneath your feet or catch the big toes. Very similar action to what we've been doing for a lot of the work of this class. Start with the heart reaching out. Take the inhale and exhale, pull down. One more inhale here, and exhale, release. Reach the heart out. Gently step back to plank pose. Taking a moment here just to stabilize the front and the back body. And then roll your way back to downward facing dog. Inhale, bring the right leg forward to pigeon pose. Right foot to left wrist. Right knee towards right wrist. Elevate the chest. Take an inhale. And exhale. Melt your way towards the floor. Let this feel good, right? A lot of the stuff we've been doing, tons of effort with the legs, creating new strength and new flexibility. You have to do your best to also move away from those efforts and just release in. Just a few more breaths, really allowing yourself to melt down a touch more. Any little adjustments you need to make, make them here. And we'll take these last few breaths together. We'll take three. So inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, 
Slowly bring the hands back underneath the shoulders. Press into the palms just enough to set the right foot right back to your downward facing duck. And then bring the left leg forward, pigeon pose side two. So the left foot close to the right hand, the left knee close to the left hand. Square off the hips, stay upright for the beginning moment. Really set yourself up properly. And then gently fold over the left shin, working your way towards the ground. Arms can extend out, arms can make a pillow for your head. I really like to do that quite often, especially after the practice we just did. Feels a bit more comforting to me. Allows me to relax a little bit more, and that's what we're looking for from this posture right now. Stay with your breath. Stay with still, stay with being content, being understanding. final breaths together here. Go ahead and inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Gently walk the hands back underneath the shoulders, pressing into the palms, reaching the heart out slightly. Tuck the back toes under, step to your plank pose. Reach the heart out a little bit. Visualize yourself walking or floating through your hands. Don't make much of it one way or another. Step your butt on the ground. Come right back into that Baddha Konasana. We begin classing. Gently roll yourself down to the ground, allowing yourself to completely release into your Shavasana. Letting the efforts of the practice close themselves off. Feel your legs letting go. Feel your body. Gently moving into a comfortable position where there's no tension, right? Notice if you're pressing your arms into the floor. Can you release them? Notice if you're elevating your shoulders. Can you release them? Notice if you're putting too much effort into your feet or your knees in any particular position. Can you release them? Can you allow yourself to just let go? Thank you so much for taking the time to practice with me today. If you enjoyed class, please hit the like button on this video and subscribe to our channel. We have new yoga videos that are coming your way every Tuesday, new food videos that are coming out every Wednesday, and video blogs are making a strong comeback this week on Thursday. Hope you're having an amazing day and look forward to catching up with you soon on this channel or in person at one of our classes. Peace.